This video will talk about simple linear regression and correlation. We'll talk about what the meaning of least, square, least squares is, how to calculate correlation, and how to calculate the equation of a least squares regression line. First, a little bit of a more background on regression. Historically, the father of the method of least squares was Adrien Marie Legendre. This person was a mathematician, but he pioneered many concepts in regression. Actually, there is a crater on the moon that is named after him. When it comes to regression, we're interested in predicting something that we don't know. As it happens, that thing we don't know is a number. Often, we'll have independent variables at our disposal to make some kind of prediction. This is the information we have. We'll use those independent variables to say something about the dependent variable, also known as the response variable, and this is what we need to know. Oftentimes, the independent variables are the easy variables to collect. The dependent variables are the harder data to get. And so if we have a regression equation that predicts our dependent variables using some easy to collect data, then we can do a numerical prediction and we can do a regression. And a regression really allows us to make inference from one variable to another. Say, for example, there's a relationship between Celsius and Fahrenheit, uh, two different measures of how warm it is. So there's a line that might go through all of those points. If we know how hot it is in Celsius, we know how hot it is in Fahrenheit. And so the regression line describes how a response variable y changes with an explanatory variable x, or how a dependent variable y changes with an independent variable x. Have a look at this jar of jelly beans. How many jelly beans do you think are in this jar? We'll go through an example where we'll get us to be thinking about the error around estimates. As an example, someone might think there are 100 jelly beans in the jar. Another person might think there are 500. Say the true amount of jelly beans in the jar is 260. In doing this exercise in the past, that's about what it's been. The person that said that it was 100 jelly beans would have underestimated. The person that said it was 500 jelly beans would have overestimated. And so we can think about the error associated with their estimates. First of all, whether they underestimated or overestimated. And second of all, how the magnitude is. How far away did they answer relative to the true value? And so we can think of the jelly bean problem as a location problem. That is, these true values and their predicted values get us thinking about the error or what we'll call the noise that's inherent to all data sets. For the jelly bean problem, we can continue to make error-filled attempts that measure the number of jelly beans. If y hat is the predicted number of jelly beans, like 100, the true number of jelly beans, 260, plus some amount of error can be added up to get that predicted number of jelly beans but you may have to subtract or add a different amount of error depending on the prediction. And so this is why we can think of the jelly bean problem as a location problem. We're interested in how far away each prediction is from the true value. Now the jelly bean problem is different from the temperature problem. For the temperature problem, we have specific values if it's one temperature in degrees Celsius, it can only be one temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And so for the example with the jelly beans, for one value of x, say if we're looking at all the jelly beans in a 16 ounce jar, we have multiple values of y, the number of jelly beans. Let's say each student in class could guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. And so the concept of residuals measure the difference between some observed value y and some predicted value y hat. And so this is an important concept in regression when we'll begin to be talking about residuals and how they fit around the regression line. 
A slightly more difficult problem than the location problem with jelly beans, or the, uh, the problem with temperature and degrees and degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, is interpolation. We're going to go through an example that will get us thinking more about the error across multiple values. What you see here are data from three farmers, Joe, Mary, and Alan. We have crop production costs and corn yield. And so we have the estimated cost of crop production on the x-axis, and we only have two values, at $600 and at $700 per acre. You can see that if they put in different amounts of dollars per acre into producing, uh, let's say in this case, corn yield, they can produce different amounts. And so the same three farmers don't produce the same exact amount of bushels per acre in corn yield. And so we're going to go through an example using the data set that we have here with the number of bushels per acre produced for different costs of crop production to interpolate between uh, these two values. So for example, if we have data at $600 and $700 per acre, what might we say about it when we put in $650 per acre into crop production? How might that influence our yield or our bushels per acre?